Yeah. It's the way it gotta be, gotta be. It's the way it gotta be, gotta be. We ain't gon' lose, we ain't gon' lose. It was a thing in the past when we always used to lose. I know. Yeah. We winning right now, we winning right now. We gon' win right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still in it. Lots of life, sometimes I be fearing it. Lots of life, sometimes I be fearing it. I be fearing it. Yeah, and no, I'm not feeling it. Gotta get it. Better get with it. If you ain't with it, man, you better get with it. Turkey, chicken, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, eat good, that's a good living. Yeah, eat good, that's a good living. Eating good, man, that's the way I'm living. You know, I got it all. I gotta thank God because He gave it to me all. Amen. Hey Joe. <laughs> so we give them the reality, man. I mean, I mean, that's the only way we know how to do it. Choice tape. And we're just gonna go right into it. What's going on? What's going on, man? Thank you for having me. You know, it's a pleasure, bro. Come on, man. Talk to the people. What's the name? What my, we doing? Oh, my name is Baha. Man, I come from Sacramento, California. Mm. I was raised out here, but I was born in Iran. Um, you know, all the way back to the Middle East, and you know, we traveled. You know, until we got here. Damn. Okay, we definitely need to hear this story. So Sacramento, talk about it. Sacramento. You know, Sacramento. I moved here in 1997. Mm. Um, I was. How old I'm 25. So, 25, yeah. So this is about, well, I was about five years old. We moved to Sacramento, and, you know, um, we moved, and, you know what I mean, I just, we moved all the way around Sacramento, you know what I mean? The first couple of years, we lived in, you know what I mean, for the like, first, like, seven years, we lived off of How and Arden, um, you know, and then we slowly just moved up and going. We moved up to the Madison area for about four years, and then we moved to Citrus Heights. Mm. And then, you know, we just moved around. We've been moving around since, you know, we left Iran, so we've been just migrating to, you know, kind of got, you know, reside down Sacramento. We got a new spot. How, uh, so how, how was that, the, the trip, like, America for the first time? America, uh, for the first time, is dope. Um, first time I came to America, we moved to Jacksonville, Florida in mm. 1996. So um, we were out there, and it, it was weird because, you know, we were, we were in Austria for a little bit, refugee, being refugees over there. Mm. And when we got our, you know, I mean, approval to come, the visa to come to the United States from, uh, we moved here. It was pretty lit. We moved um, as soon as we got here. It was around Thanksgiving. So we got here around, like, Thanksgiving time. So we, we came here. It was a big feast. Everyone was eating, you know. Right. <laughs> and it was like, oh, shit, America, you know, means lit. And then, you know, slowly I had to move, like, I had to make friends. So coming from a place that, like, it, since we left Iran, you know what I mean, I've been, like, meeting hella new people. Like, growing up, I, when I was in Austria, I had, like, friends in four different cultures. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I picked up their languages, you know, and started speaking it. Uh, moved to Florida. You know, now I'm Americans. And, like, life was just going so fast-paced. And then we just got up and left after a year. Right. And we moved to um, California, and then we landed in Oakland. We lived in San Jose for a little bit mm -hmm. uh, with my uncle, and we moved. Then we moved to Sacramento, and then realized, you know, what I mean, um, the biggest thing was everyone, you know, means chill. Like when we came here, we we lived in um, a Section Eight housing, mm -hmm. um, and you know, it was it was like the Jets in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and the cool thing about it was they, um, you know I mean, I got to meet people who were like us. We came here with $25, so, like, when we came, everyone was open hand, everyone was helping yeah. us, you know, and then, right. and then, you know, growing up. Then when I came to Sacramento, crazy thing is, I never felt racism until I was about, like, I was moving up in Sacramento. I went to, like, we went to sit, I went to Orangeville uh, for high school, um, and when I was out there, then I, felt, Folsom, right? Yeah, right. Folsom. Then, then I felt Yeah, we didn't Then I felt a little more racism. It was crazy because I never felt it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, really, I did feel it growing up, but I didn't feel like it to the point like, oh, shit. So I, I learned a lot. You know what I mean? The last... Like, well, what, so you got to talk, like, how did it, like... Um, was it, like, blatant in your face racism? Or yeah, what? like, right straight in my face. Like, that's the first time I've seen, like, 
like anything with like you know with people being like racist towards another kind of person or for, for being a different culture, making fun of them twenty four seven, and people think it's funny, mm. you know. And I was and I was like, but at that point I was like, you know what I mean? I don't really fuck with it. Right. So I kind of tuned myself away from most people, and you know I that's why now damn near we started with Immigrant Records because it's such a like growing up I heard so much bullshit for it, mm. and you know so now I'm like okay I gotta really you know what I mean put on. For something that that actually resembles me, and and I'm proud to be, you know. Right. And you know, I come with a lot of culture, so I understand a whole lot of shit from like people, like you know, what I mean, I understand people who are from from Europe. I understand people from here. I understand every other culture really well because moving around and have to learn everything from everybody, and your friends are different. Like I have friends that I didn't even speak English with; they were just my friends because they were trying to help me out. You know what I mean? Be right. cool with me. I, I remember like when I come to like first grade and like. You know I mean, I really speak English, so it was like everyone. I, I remember, like I used to get lost. I didn't know where the bathroom was. You know what I mean? I couldn't right. really speak, so it was like people. Were like I met people who were actually willing to help me, and just like they taught me English. Like kids, younger kids. You know what I mean? Like right. we're all like first graders, and people actually like sing. You know what I mean? Different type of people. Like everyone was helping each other with their struggle, and then I, and it was kind of like surprising because then I met people from my own culture. Right. And they're a little bit more like, I have to like, I was like, oh, well, you're weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this person is way. So I, that's why I kind of put differentiated. When I was like really young, I didn't really didn't see, like, growing up. That's the difference between me and most, you know, most people coming. They always try to stick together, this and that. Right. I realized, no, you know what I mean? Everyone's different, bro. Like, you know, I, I, with my best friend, you know what I mean? He, like, went to high school and stuff. Like, well, I, I, I used to be very, like, when I was, because I was still learning English. By the time I was in, like, ninth grade, my accent kind of was kind of going away. So the crazy thing is my friend, like, you know what I mean? He taught me how to, like, talk shit to people. And, you know what I mean? Like, because I, I sit there because people would roast me, but my culture is like, you know what I mean? The way I was raised is like, don't mind, don't pay them attention, just keep doing you. Right. And, then my, and I was like, I let a lot of shit slide when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my homie's like, nah, you gotta, gotta get on them. You know, I gotta get on their helmets. So I was like, for sure, you feel me? Like, after that, like, after like 10th grade, I was on everyone's helmet. As, as soon as I got an opportunity, like, if they're on my helmet, I got right back on their helmet. Right. And then I graduated, and I, you know what I mean? And just keep moving up in life. I learned a lot of shit from different people. Like, I understand how people. You know why they think the way they think. You know what I mean? Because I have to understand. Because I used to go to people's house, whole different culture than my house. You know what I mean? My house is very strict, loving home, but very strict. Like I wasn't able to do shit. Like I had to be home when I'm home. Like you know what I mean? Looking I, at that, it, do you think the because you you had so much culture, did it? Do you think it helped or hurt you as you grew up? You think about the things you could have did with having certain freedoms. Actually, you know, film. I feel like my culture made me who I am. The hustle I have comes from all that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I got... The way I was raised, I was raised with making decisions like, you know what I mean, not not fucking with my own kind, kind of, because mm -hmm. they're, fuck, they're, they're disrespecting my friend or whatever. I had to, like, step away from... It kind of big, made my heart bigger. Like, realizing, hey, you know, everyone got struggle, everyone got everything, but at least I know there's certain rules that I learned but my culture didn't only help me, a lot of different cultures helped me, you know what I mean? I learned a lot, you know, from like, you know, when I was, when I first came here, um, uh, you know what I mean? I learned how my, my best friend's black, so like, me, me and him, you know what I mean? He, he taught me how to get people on help, man. My culture didn't teach me that. Mm -hmm. Music, you know, I love music, you know what I mean? Music's a big part of my life. I was introduced to real music by my friends, you know what I mean? Like, because right. well, growing up, like, till I was like, like 11 years old, the first rap music that I really listened, started listening to was uh, 50 Cent. Mm. You know what I mean? And like the Junior was probably, I was like a big Junior fan, bro. I had the Junior hat, Junior shoes, everything. <laughs> like, I, I, I really like, get Richard Dyke trying at that moment, you know? And then I started listening to other rap music, and you know, even to this day, I'll go out with them, and then they'll, they'll be playing some old music. And I'm still learning, you know? Because right. I started late. So it's not, for me, for a while, I was like, oh man, this rap is good. Like, then I started some old shit, and I, like, I'm picking up more shit, and like, learning new shit. Um, like, my friend, like, I was like, it was crazy because I was like 15 when I heard about Jay Dilla. Mm. You know what I mean? Everyone already knew about him, and, right. and I, I'm still like learning, and I, I'm still trying to dig. Like recently, we just went to LA. I learned a whole lot of new shit, and I came back. All right now, I'm just digging. Like I'm putting like aside time, sit there and listen to more music, and just like understand like different. You know what I mean? Different flows, different why people did it differently in the East Coast, why people did it. Like learning more and more, digging more into like each city itself. You know, right. like, growing up, what I. But I first, like, you know, when I came here, it was, like, the Pac and Biggie, you know what I mean? But there was so much more to it, you know? Uh, what do you think, 
like to think about the, the friends that you had growing up and how they kind of showed you this and showed you that. Could you imagine having friends that just showed you the completely wrong way of living? You know, um, I, mean? I had some. Mm. Yeah, I had some people. You know, they they threw they. I helped them out a lot, and you know, what I mean, they always fed me bullshit. And I'm a I'm a nice guy, so it wasn't that I was dumb. It was right. just that I was more loyal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I. I don't, they took my kindness and stuff for my weakness, and you know I learned a lot. Like you know, growing up, like that was the sad. But when I hit 18, I started doing a lot of business moves, and then I got I got screwed over by business partners, people you know who deceived, and you know I'm not a type of person to snap over like something like that. So I had to take take back and learn from it, and I, it made me stronger. Right. So there's a lot of people who deceived me the wrong way in my life, but it's, it never threw me off, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I you know what I mean, I've been, you know what I mean, I, I've taken hits for people, you know what I mean, when shit went wrong, I, I was sometimes most of the ones that was a fault, you know? Right. People I helped out and they left me behind. It's all good because that was the, they were there to teach me, you know what I mean? If I, because if they weren't around, maybe I would have done it, you know, you know what I mean? I would have, but it was good because it was a lesson right away, you know what I mean? Like, hey, there's a bunch of snakes out there, so you got to be careful and not listen to everybody. And, and you got to really follow your dream. Because if someone came and told me, hey, Baha, I think, like, growing up, they'd be like, oh, be a doctor, do this. There's good money in it. Well, fuck that. I don't want to do all that. You know what I mean? Right. I don't care about the money. I'm going to do what I want, and the money comes, you know? Right. So right now, you know, I'm just doing what I want in life. And, you know, I've met a lot of, you know, I own my own business. And I work hard, bro, every day. I work about seven days a week for seven years now. And, mm -hmm. and I'm just, like, going forward with this. And I'm not really... Trying to like, you know what I mean, like take anything that anybody diff against me in a bad way. I actually want to thank them, you know what I mean, for, uh, you know what I mean, teaching me, you know what I mean, to watch certain things. And that I understand character now, you know, like when I see a person act like a certain person, I already know who that person is, you know what I mean? Because everyone comes in different colors and shapes and sizes, but certain people act the same way, you know what I mean? Um, a shady person is going to be a shady person, doesn't matter about... What is this? It's about actions, the way they look, the way they talk, your body movements. You know, you learn certain things that you stay away from. Mm. And this is a 25-year-old 25 25 year man, guys. Like, come on, your DM's popping, man. You, you sound like you got it together, man. You're young. Yeah, I, I got I, I my DM, man. You know, I, the thing was, from, I stay out of the way. Mm. So, like, recently I've been more, like, last year I've been more into, when I started getting into music, uh, I just wanted to do music. But my friends like, if you want to do music, you really got to get people to know who you are. And, uh, you know what I mean? I've been staying out of the way and just doing my thing. Mm -hmm. I just, you know what I mean? I have, like, I have a mission. I have a goal. And right now, you know what I mean? Part, everything that I'm doing is part of the, you know what I mean, the plan. And we're just moving forward. Right. Man, that's, I mean, you, you got to do it. So in, in what ways do you... Um... Like, does your family support your music? Uh, um, yeah, my, my family supports my music. Um, there's a lot of ifs and buts about it because it's a culture thing, you know. Mm. If I smoke some weed in the video, they're going to be like, uh, you know what I mean? Right. They, what, what is your family going to think back at home? I really don't care. You know what I mean? At this point, like, mm. if this is who I am and this is this is part of what, you know what I mean, part of the culture that I'm part of. So, you know what I mean? I can't really hide nothing. So, it, it's they're, we're learning to accept it in a certain way. You know what I mean? I shot my first video. I was like, I can't smoke in it. You know what I mean? Right. But now I'm like, dude, no. You do what you want to do because this is who I am. I can't act. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard for me to act. You know what I mean? To sit there and be like, hey, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm somebody I'm not. And, you know, my parents recently they learned to accept it because I do my thing. You right. know what I mean? I'm not I'm not really hurting anybody by doing my lifestyle. I'm actually, you know what I mean, moving forward. So it's good. Do you feel that, uh, like, it's, it's kind of hard when you have, like, such a tight, close family like that, you know? To, like, kind of live how you want to live? No. Like, well, or did you always say, you know what, I just want, I'm going to do me regardless? Yeah, it doesn't really I've, I've been like that since I've been younger. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'm like the person who who would, would play rap music at the, you know, family events and get in trouble for it. I didn't care. You feel me? Like, right. I, that's what I like listening to. Like, I was slapping junior, I, you know, I, I my, you know, my birthday parties and, you know, again, cussing all that, Eminem, playing Eminem all the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> Eminem cussing his ass off, talking hell of shit. Right. And, you know what I mean? To me, it was enjoyable. That's why... I was maybe the icebreaker for my family, you know what I mean? Because all my brothers, they grew up a certain way. They're older than me, so they had, they were raised in it. Right. I was a kid when I moved here, so I'm like, this is how everyone else living. You guys can't keep telling me to live a way that, that that's not relevant, you know what I right. mean? And took my my mom was the first to accept it, and my dad later on, like, he fell into it. But me and my dad have a good relationship, so I was like... You know what I mean? Like, like my dad right now, he keeps on like, oh man, you should drop more music, you should do this, you should do that. My dad's giving me advice, or oh, you should start rapping in Farsi. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Maybe I will. 
you know what I mean, and start rapping my culture, my language as well, because I do speak it and I'm fluent in it. So it's like, might as well do something, you know what I mean, and give a part of it, because I am cultured, you know what I mean, for, for with the hip hop and stuff in the community and we're understanding what I could, what I could bring to the culture over there. I can actually, you know, be one of the artists that actually could explain it the right way. Right. Because I lived it, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? in this day and age, though, do you really have to live what you rap about? Or uh, sing about? I, I think so. How do you feel about that? I think so. Because it's like deceiving if you're lying. If you're over here and you're rapping, you're just saying you're a good guy, and you put on your team and you owe someone money, and you know that, and you're not, and you're being a scam artist. You know what I mean? And you're not really, you're playing, you're deceiving, and lying. That's on you, bro. Like, you know what I mean? That's not, but that's not what I'm about. Like, I can't really sit there and be like, hey, man, you know what I mean? Um, this and that and that. Well, I do touch money. I do talk about. I do rap about money. That's a big thing. A lot of people oh. Rap. But you feel me? I own a car lot. You feel me? So mm. I can rap my money. I can have nice cars in my video because that's why I'm around 24-7. Right. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? I do business. So, of course, money's going to be on my top, my, my, my head 24-7 because I'm, I'm on my grind. Mm. But at the same time, I like cars, bro. So why would I, if I have access to a nice car, why would I put that in my video? You know? Right. And why would I not talk why would I not have a female in my video when I'm talking about a female it makes no sense you know what I mean so if I'm living that life and I have access these are actually things I can go get and put in my video and talk about it and it's real why not do it you know but I would not I'm not gonna go rent a car and put in my video you know what I mean mm. I have access to this stuff so why not use it sounds like you have a little bit of integrity yeah I, I got pride in what I do that, that's why I am where I'm at I'm 25 you know mm -hmm. I, if, I, if I say I'm going to do something I'm going to do it I'm not going to just be there and be like oh I got this and, and act for my music I know entertaining is entertaining but that's not me I, I, I can't I can't act you know what I mean like if I like you I like you if I don't like you you know Right. you know people out there they know I don't like them on the low like, if I don't like you, you know why, and you know the reason. I already talked about it, and you know what I mean? Even if we didn't see each other face to face, but we've talked about it, and you know, I, I and I let shit slide. You feel me? Like, I let shit slide because of, you know what I mean? I don't hold grudges, but I know not to fuck with you. Right. You know, so I'm not gonna sit there and act. Like, I'm a type of person, I won't, like, I'll pay someone for a feature. Yeah. Like, for the time to go to the studio and pay for this studio time and all that. But I'm not gonna pay extra to fuck with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. I understand every man has to, a budget. Every man, you know, has to pay. Like, okay, you go to the studio. I'm not expecting you to pay out of your pocket to record for me. Right. It's my song. I'm, I'm supposed to get the royalties. I'm supposed to, you know, break down the bread with you. So it's my investment. So I understand that's okay. But you know what I mean? Like people out here, like, for example, like, you know, like why would I go to the cannabis club when I have a bunch of homies that are good as weed? <laughs> I'm not gonna go to pay someone for a name brand. Like I'm not gonna pay you fifty dollars an eighth when I'm getting it for twenty dollars an eighth. I'm going to go get my juke price. You know what I mean? Right. I'm a hustler. I'm not going to pay extra for shit. And that's what I think a lot of people will take offense to. Like, they think I'm over here, like, I'm going to have a big bag. Even if I have the biggest bag in the world, I'm going to still try to win that business deal because that's what I'm made of. I'm made for business. So it's like, you know what I mean? I understand. Like, if, if, if I say, okay, hey, invest 20000 you're going to make fifty back. Oh, here we go. You feel me? Right. I'm ready to make money. But, you know what I mean? I got to make sure what makes sense makes dollars, you know? And if it don't do that, it doesn't... I don't need to like really do it. Like I, I, I had a feature. Um, some dude hit me. You know what I mean? He told me his price. I respected it. You know what I mean? And, but I told him what I have for him because that's that's the budget I put for that song. Right. I'm not out here making platinum hits yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Maybe I have them hidden. They're bubbling, but as I'm not making that money. So if I was making, okay, hey, you feel me? Like, hey, this this song's gonna make me a million, bro. I'll invest five hundred thousand in it. That's right. a five hundred thousand dollar come up. I don't care what anybody says. You know what I mean? If I know something's gonna work, I'm gonna do it because that's the business in me and saying, hey, if you put some money in there, it's gonna come back. Because if I put the money in the bank, nothing's gonna come back to me anyways. Mm -hmm. Might as well put something in rotation. So, you know, I just don't fuck with people that you know gonna act fake and you know what I mean. When, you, when I talk to people, sometimes I feel like they, they like they want to act like you know what I mean. I know. You know, when you buy Instagram followers, it's noticeable. Right. When you buy views, and all that shit. So, like, I want to fuck with people because I want to fuck with them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't deal with that fake shit. It's, like, horrible to me. Could you put a price on that? If somebody was like, hey, man, I need you to be fraud real quick. I'm going to throw you a million. Dep it depends. I'll tell you this. If it's my homie and he's trying to come up 
and the person on the other side I have no I have no relationship towards. But I won't do that for like my image. But like if I have to go out there and be a salesperson and you know what I mean and help them make a deal happen, that's business. But I will not put price on it to sell my like sell myself as somebody I'm not to the world. I won't do that because I got more you know pride for that. I have a lot of I got a lot of things behind me. You know what I mean? Like I got I gotta realize what I do affects my culture of people. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, right now, my people don't really have a good image. You know what I mean? Middle Easterns right now in general, you know, they're, they're frowned upon right now in the world really bad. So anything I make a decision on, I'm going to especially put myself in front of cameras and stuff. It's going to affect my people as well. And as much as, you know, I, I love my culture, I can't do that to myself. Right. Can I get a cool yell? No, leave her out there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's not good. So, uh, with, with like, how do you, how are you gonna then, like, do you have kids? No. Kid. So when you have your kids, are you going to pass on this new type of culture that you kind of adapted to? Yeah, or, of, of course. That's because of me. Right. Because the way I live is gonna, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go and change. Like, you know what I mean? Of course, you know what I mean. I'm not gonna be taking more risk in life, and you know what I mean. When you have kids, because you know you got, you understand. Like, but business deals, I'm gonna still do. My culture, I'm still. I love our food. You know what I mean. Right. I'm gonna pass that on. I love our um, holidays. I'm gonna pass that. I'm gonna pass on how I was raised to my kids. But one thing I'm gonna change is I'm not gonna be so strict on my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna make sure the house is not somewhere like outside is not fun. You feel me? Inside the house is more fun. Because right. you growing up, you like try to run away from the home. You know what I mean? Right. Because it ain't I'm not gonna do that to my kids. You know what I mean? I want to be real with me because if my dad, my kid asked me, "Hey, did you do this when you were younger?" Yeah, I did. Even if it was against the law or whatever, if they ask me, I'm gonna tell them the truth because I feel like, you know what I mean? You you listen. You, but when the friends tell you, you don't want to listen. But when someone tells you and they're honest and your mom and dad or something, you actually listen because over time you realize this person's not lying to you. And you, when you grow up, you see this person's always lying, lying. All your friends lie, and your parents don't lie. So. Why well, lie to my kids and tell them, you know what I mean, I never did something when I did. And if they really want to pay some money and investigate, they can find that information. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm not going to lie to my own, and I'm not going to lie to my kids. And that's out of pocket, you know what I mean? Right. If they ask a question, I'm supposed to be the one answering and not the, somebody else, you know? Right. So that's that's my goal for the whole thing, you know? Right. The, uh, <clears throat> looking at it. Man, it's so funny because you were at the like at the right age to soak in so much information. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you how do you think uh, that made you who you are? Because I couldn't even imagine. So when you moved to Florida, you were how old? I was four. Four. So going from school to school, like, what, what was that like? Because that was tight. I'm sorry, it was tight. I, I, I like they, looking back at it. When I was younger, I was like, man, I don't have a best friend moving around a lot. Mm. But you know, no one that was all these people I met. Like I, I don't, I don't see them no more. The people I was best friends with, I, I, I don't see them no more. You know right. what I mean? There's certain people in my life that are here right now. They're supposed to be. Right. But I look back. I got blessed, bro, because I got taught. I got taught a lot. Mm. You know what I mean? And that that's probably helped me in business. You know what I mean? Mm. When people come in, and I don't. Like I don't, I like I like dealing with every culture. Right. Uh, every culture to me has like a, a fun like sales to it or fun like talk. Uh, when I talk to them, like they always talk about it. Like you know, what I mean, there's something relatable with everybody, and it, most of the time it's food. You know, what I mean, we all love each other's food, so it's like you know. Fun What's your favorite it? dish, man? Talk to me, man. Favorite dish? Um, ah, fuck, man. My favorite dish is hard, bro, because it, it's like times. You know what I mean? Um, I like there's been times I've been on my Thai food hype. You know what I mean? There's times I've been on my Middle Eastern hype. You know what I mean? Of course, though, but my favorite dish is a dish that's, that's it's a Persian dish called Fesenjun. It's really good. Um, it's, it's made with, it's like a bunch of shredded chicken, made with plum sauce, walnuts. It's like, it's mixed up and it's like a stew. Mm -hmm. And it's bomb as hell. You know what I mean? If, if you haven't tried it, you should try it. It's, it's like sweet tasting. It's, it's, it's very good. And you have it with rice and the rice, of course, you know, most Middle Easterners, we all love our rice, you know what I mean? Right. So we eat everything with rice, you know, kebabs, any stew we make, we always eat it with rice. It's bomb. <laughs> it's like... Definitely hungry now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, you talk about smoking. So what does that do, man? 420 in the house. 420 in the house. <laughs> um, keeps me sane, bro. I've been through some shit that, like, will make some makes it make you want to, like, you know, and put someone in the grave for it, but it's mm -hmm. like... It's, you know what I mean, some, I, I seen some fucked up shit, and I've had, like, 
mm-hmm. really like growing up like it kept me it kept me calm like because I, I have an anger issue bro like so like I'm good with it now, but when I was younger, I used to snap a lot. You feel me? Right. So now, like, you know what I mean? Growing up, I went, I lost, I lost a million dollars overnight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I had a business and I came in, everything was gone. So like, I put me in a hole three hundred thousand. That was about three, four years ago. So I, you know what I mean? Climbed right back up, and you know what I mean? Right now, everyone's like, "Oh man, like, you're doing good." This is my comeback right now. Like, I'm not even right. at the peak that I'm saying hey, I'm happy. You know what I mean? I'm about to just go over that ledge that that could be back to who I want to be again and my financially wise you know what I mean I am still who I am but it's like where I was was different you know what I mean someone you know what I mean I had a business partner he deceived me you know what I mean and he tried to use me as a Ponzi scam but I kind of beat him to the punch I you know what I mean he was going to leave me with a lot of debt but I paid off like half of the debt like I went to ACH and everything paid that off you know what I mean and, and he was just trying to be a Ponzi scam and you know what I mean and he, tried, he tried to fuck me over a bunch of bullshit you know what I mean? I, like, when he did that, I had, like, I had another car lot, so, like, DMV was on our ass, and um, they were talking about, like, you know what I mean? There was counts of, like, like hella grand theft because he had done some scandalous shit. Mm-hmm. So I was sitting there, and I'm like, fuck, you know what I mean? I have another part of it, but at the same time, you know how the system works until you're proving not guilty, you're not guilty. You're right. guilty, you feel me? So I was sitting there, like, sitting there, fucking, you know what I mean? And sitting in the cell and just, like, really, I was like, fuck, there's nothing I can do. Right. You feel me? Like I'm sitting. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I didn't do anything. You feel me? So I'm like sitting there. I'm like, uh, and then they came and just released me, bro. They just like, hey, you know, they they found all the shit that was going wrong was on him, mm. and they couldn't get a hold of him, and they got a hold of me, and I was nowhere. You know what I mean? Right. So honestly, I, I I didn't break. You know what I mean? I just sat there and just waited, and you know what I mean? Because I didn't do anything, bro. So I'm not guilty at all. So. I didn't give a shot sitting there, and uh, it took me about three weeks. So I came out, and I was broke. You feel me? I was bro- dead broke. Like right. I-, I was dead broke to the time when people were calling me, "Hey, we need, we need, we need twenty thousand, thirty thousand for you." I got the IRS on my ass. Hey, we need two hundred thousand for you. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Yeah. So at that point, it was like I started thinking about going, going the other way, and I really thought about. It. I was like, you know what? I'm better, not better than that, because money's good and any way you can get it. But I realized that my situation was hot already. Right. I couldn't make it hotter. Right. <laughs> so I was like, so I, so I had to start making income. So I was like, I, was, I started selling cars with my bro, you know, my my brother, and we started flipping cars and faster because I, I got him on board and we start, you know, what I mean, flipping cars and I had, you know, some people who give me cars on on on, on the front, basically like 30, 40 cars. Cause they, they didn't know what I could do with them, so I was flipping it for people, and I was making my little increments, bro. Then I started hustling, you know, um, doing other shit and and other businesses. Like if someone needed help or something, like I was writing business plans and doing shit for people, and you know, helping them like establish their shit. I was getting paid for it, but I was like nonstop working, bro. And then I then I started working with my brother in Arizona, went out there with him, made cool money out there, it's t- tucked off because I was just, like so fucked up in the head, I had to tuck off. Right. And just get my shit together and came right back. But, you know, everything that I did to this day, like, I had to hustle nonstop. And people were like, oh, man, you're doing good. You're always working. But I didn't see none of that shit. Right. You know what I mean? But my thing was, is like, as soon as I get rid of everybody, because everyone's like, why don't you bankrupt? And I'm like, I'm not bankrupting, bro. 22-year-old kid bankrupt for what? Right. You feel me? Yeah, I'm going to be a ba- But because I know bankruptcy, bro, they don't give you no loans after that. You can't get a house loan to get a bankruptcy for 10 years. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, fuck that. I ain't going to do that. So I... I, re- I reestablished myself, worked on everything, you know what I mean, slowly build up. But right now, you know what I mean, we're back to the pencil. That's why now we're pushing. Last year was like a test year for us. Mm-hmm. I dropped a bunch of, I dropped Baja Blast EP, and I dropped a bunch of, like, different type of songs on there. Just to, just, I was just starting to rap, you know what right. I mean? And the whole time I was writing, I used to freestyle with my friends and stuff. I made my first song. It was, like, horrible, most horrible song I ever made. Um, I made it with my homie Dez. We were in his garage. I was, like, I was like 15, 16. And then I, after that, I kind of made a song. And then I kind of went to studios here and there just to have fun. Right. And then I really didn't take it serious until I went to Arizona. I went to the studio called Song Mine. One of the dopest studios, bro. I called the dude on my hand. Here, I don't see you. Yeah. He's, like, he's, like, he's like, you see that? He said, like, look to your right. And the wall moved, bro. <laughs> and I, I was like, what the fuck? And I pulled in, 
and then I guess it's like you know what I mean, Lil Wayne. Um, they recorded Lollipop there, and it was a big ass studio, bro. Like this is a multi millionaire studio, and I'm out in there, you know, gave me a tour of it. And I had my first session. I I, I recorded this guy named John. Um, he did a whole lot of shit for the Bone Thugs. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? That had hella plaques on the wall, bro. And he worked with DMX, hella. So it was like, I was hearing hella stories. I was like, damn, this shit's crazy. Right. I was recording there, and you know what I mean? It was cool, because I... Don't get it wrong. The engineer, that studio was the, like the one of the best studios I've been to. But I wasn't ready to be in the atmosphere, you right. know. I was in there little, little as <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro, I'm in that rapper life, you know. But it came out to be the dopest part about it was we went to. Um, I came back to SAG. I, I was going through some shit, so I started writing music. I was in my homie Dez's house, and you know he makes beats. So I was over there, and he was making beats all the time, and I was just freestyling. You know what I mean? Talking to him and just like writing music. Then I started writing music. Then I recorded. Then I met this dude named Q. Everyone know Q made the beat. You know, he's, a, he's my engineer. And he were, I started working with him. And he really like kind of got me influenced. He's like, no, but he taught me a whole lot of shit. He's like, do it this way. Do it this way. Try it this way. No, we do it. We were in the studio for hours, bro. Like, I remember one week I, I was in the studio with Q for like 16 hours. Damn. You know, that's the beginning start. And, and, and I, working, I was going at night, like three hours a night. You know what I mean? And we were there for five days straight, and we knocked out this like we knocked out like ten songs, and like ten songs for me was I was writing at the studio, you know all this like, and then we went. Now it takes a lot of shorter time to process do all that, right. but like now like I'm more organized what I'm doing. Now I really now I'm actually writing. I'm gonna talk more. The music that's coming out now is kind of talking about some stuff in it, but it's more you know what I mean. I'm just talking and shit, right. but it's, I, I put certain shit in there that I'm talking about, like, you know, a lot of people, they, they, they judge me because I spend money on my music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not organic. Well, you feel me? Like, what's not organic is to sign to a label, you know what I mean? Right. And let them do it for you. So you're independent, huh? No, I'm independent for sure, you know what I mean? If they want someone wants to come to me, they got to come to me with a big bag, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking 100000 It's like, I, I know, I know when the shit, it's an investment. Right. Like after a while, I've seen it. I've seen artists that spend a lot of money, you know what I mean, and, and on themselves and to get where they're at, you know what I mean? Right. I'm not signing to no label just because they're throwing me a couple stacks. Like, it's not about that, you know what I mean? Because that only pays me out, but I have a whole team behind me and people who supported me and, and give me advice and engineers and producers who fuck with me. So if I sign, they don't get nothing about it, you right. know what I mean? So it's not only about because of me and being the position that I am, people who help me, they need to be that do it for shit for free, that that cost me hella money, you know what I mean? Right. I gotta make sure they, they reap the benefits from it too because it was only me that got me there. So it's like, I'm not gonna do it for a small bag, like there's no way, like, I'm not gonna budge for a small <laughs> bag like, at all. Not work. No, not gonna work because, bro, I could do this show on my own. And the money you go, you know, labels don't spend that much money on you though. They spend, they spend like 50 bands on you and they make millions off you after time like if you're an investment you gotta invest in yourself you know what i mean right. from it's like the label they're gonna give you a mansion they're gonna give you a car okay you can't do that yourself you can't take the money that you spend on your bullshit to do it for yourself that makes no sense everyone should be able to do it for themselves like hey if i'm gonna spend a hundred dollars a week on weed that's four hundred dollars a month i can spend four hundred dollars i can save up not smoke weed because i don't really need to smoke weed or smoke less weed and stack it up in like three, four months, shoot yourself a video, get nice clothes, do all that shit. Everyone's able to do it, but it takes your time and effort and sacrifice. And a lot of people don't want to sacrifice their own money for their own selves, but they, they want to sacrifice their own money about, hey, I'm going to go flip some weed or I'm going to go do this, but you're not willing to spend, you're, you, you don't, basically you don't trust that you're going to make it. You know what I mean? I trust that I'm going to make it. So I'm going to put every dollar I got that I can for this shit, put it in it, and I, you know what I mean? I keep my music money away from my normal money. You know what right. I mean? So I treat my music as I am the label first. So ba my, me, as a general, I'm the label, and Baja is the artist, you know? Right. So anything I make, say, hey, I want to put 3000 a month into my music. So I put that in my budget. Hey, I need $3,000 from my company to pay for this artist. This artist is going to... You know, eventually, and then down the road, when the mon money comes in, of course, that money goes back, and you know, what I mean, and I reap right. the benefits. But I'm not the only one behind me, and so it's not like as much as like I might, I might be the money man for it. But right. I, I have, you know, DJs that help me out. They, they make sure my shit sounds right. They do it. They come to the studio and chill with me. Right. As a friend, they're, they're they're giving me their advice for two cents. I have my homie, you know, does she shoots all my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. 
here and there, but he does it on most of the times, you know what I mean? I help him out, whatever he needs help with, but he, he got his own shit going on. So he, he steps out of his time of day and comes to help me. Right. So I fuck with him. Like, you know what I mean? If I, if I do good, I want everybody else to do, do good. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, that music video and everything came was done on a low budget, mm -hmm. but it looks big, but when the money comes in, people got to get not, you know, a chip off yeah. it because they got to feel good about it. They're right. like, oh, man, you know what I mean? He really realized the hard work I put into this shit. Because right. a lot of people don't understand photography and videography. They, people are like, they hate on the, these people, like, all these people in Sacramento who do videos and stuff. They don't get respected like they should. And people are like, oh, you shot my video for two hours. But he went back and spent eight hours on it. Right. And he has spent money on his equipment and all that. So if you really put that consider, you're paying the dude like $15 an hour, $20 an hour max. Mm. Because he might have to chip out money to someone else to edit it because he wants a second opinion on it. Right. He's like, oh, he might need a plug-in. He's got to get that online. So that's why when people tell me, oh, man, oh, Nate, don't show my video and give me his price. I didn't really, I, I don't want to hustle him. Why? Because it, 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 whatever, what, the less I pay him, the less he's going to time me on spelling my shit. Right. So, hey, bro, you know, take, take your money, you know what I mean? Whatever you ask for and, you know what I mean? It's all good. Let's just work. You know what I mean? And, and do your best. That's all I ask. You know what I mean? And right. and, and people like that because they're out here trying to eat off the shit. Right. Same way, if I if I get the record deal, I'm supposed to eat. If I get that hit, I eat. Right. So what do they get out of it? You expect them to do a free so you make millions? That doesn't work, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're really hustling the... You're not hustling the corporations. You're supposed to hustle the corporation, the record labels. You're hustling... The, the normal worker, you know what I mean? The guy who's putting effort in. So right. what? He got a camera and he can, you know, do it off GP. But that dude has bills too. You got to expect that dude, you know, you got to respect it. You know what I mean? No, no one, I'm not going to do something for a long time for somebody when they're advancing and I'm getting left behind. And I'm coming, he walking in with a brand new outfit and I'm sitting there with nothing. You know right. what I mean? I got to understand that. Like, even with me, like, oh, I'm going to go shoot a video, get all this shit. And expect my, you know what I mean, and, and, and come in with my own bottle, my own weed, and I share it. Like, come on, bro. Everyone's supposed to have fun. If you're having fun, you can't sit there and have fun in front of people and be like, no, you can't have fun. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta, right. you gotta, you gotta, everyone's got to have fun. Yeah. Right. That's, that, that's, not, that's not the right way of doing things. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the label thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I spend money on myself. So people are like, oh, you spend money, you know, you, you, why'd you, you know, you pay to do this and that. I don't care. You know, to me, it's like, what, $200? I spend 500 bucks on the song to make it, get the beat, produce it, master it, put it on uh, TuneCore, send it out for distribution. That's like 500 bucks. I'm not going to spend another 200 bucks to make sure it gets somewhere. Right. You know what I mean? I already spent 500 so what's another 200 And plus, you know what I mean? Well, $200, honestly, for yourself, you know what I mean? If you have bills and stuff, it's good, but like, you should be able to put some money behind yourself because it's worth it. Right. You know what I mean? It's worth it to promote all the artists. They should promote on Instagram. They should promote. Why? Because that's how it works. You know what I mean? I have a car lot. I buy cars. I can't sit there and be like, okay, y'all know I got cars, so come see me. I got to put that shit on Craigslist. They charge for Craigslist. You got to put it on Craigslist. That's a business. Right. You know, and so I have to understand. That's one thing I understand for sure. This is a business. I got to advertise for it, so I'm going to do that. I ain't, I'm not worried because if you go, I was out in um, L.A., I went to label and everyone's like, oh, you, you got to, you got to, you know what I mean? You got to get get on places. You got to spend money. You got to do this. This is what we do. They say, they're telling me what they're doing. And I'm listening. I'm like, okay. So all you guys are doing is investing in, in promotion and marketing for these artists. And you guys give them a chunk, but at the end, you guys reap the benefit. So fuck it. I'm going to try it. You know what I mean? It's worked for me, honestly. Right. You know what I mean? I had to make the money I spent on it back, but I don't expect it. It's my first year. Right. They said business takes about two to three years to build. So, you know what I mean? I'm in my first year, so... In three years, if I'm not making money, then I got to rethink my what I'm doing. But for the next two or three years, we're going to just ride the same way and just keep pushing. What, how do you value a dollar? Has that changed growing up from... A dollar's a dollar, bro. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sitting here and I'm not going to hate on money, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, if someone's like, I'm, I'm too, I understand, like, you know, some... If, if I'm sitting here and someone hits my phone right now and be like, hey, bye, you know what I mean, come to the studio, I got a hundred bucks for you. It's good. You feel me? That's a hundred bucks. I'm sitting here doing nothing. Right. So my hour, I got paid a hundred bucks. That's good. That's as much as a doctor or lawyer makes, you know what I mean? Right. So I'm good with that, bro, and it's cash, you feel me? So I'm going to hop up and go, shoot over there, get it. But if somebody hits me up and, like, you know what I mean, they owe me a dollar. And, and if you owe me a dollar, 
you owe me a dollar. If I give it to you, you have it. You know what I mean? Right. But if you owe me one, you owe me one, bro. And that, the reason is this, is there's been times that I've had money and then didn't have money, and I didn't even have a fucking dollar. Mm. You know what I mean? I had negative dollars. You know what I mean? So it's like, so it'd be nice. You know what I mean? What is mine is mine. And if I do want to give it to you and I, and I give it to you out of, you know what I mean? Like, hey, bro, we at the mall. Hey, buy some clothes. You feel me? I don't need that back. But if you tell me, hey, let me borrow 500 bucks, and then you tell me I'm going to get it to you, you owe it to me. Because you, you said it. Right. I, I, take, I take your word more accountable. To me, your word means more than that dollar. Mm -hmm. So if you owe me, I'm more pissed off that you didn't pay me because you didn't tell me about what you owe me. You know what I mean? Because right. you told me you're going to do that. But if you didn't tell me you're going to do that, then I wouldn't be anticipating it. That's how it works. I work on what you tell me. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's how, like, you know what I mean? A lot, a lot, a lot of my friends, they know that too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, man, don't, don't tell me you want to do some business deal and don't do it that way. If you need help, just tell me you need help and we're good. You know what I mean? If I could do it, I could do it. I'm going to help you out. Right. That's just because, you know what I mean? That's what friends are for and you're supposed to not, not for money. You know what I mean? But if you come in, like, hey, I'm going to pay you back, then you're going to pay me back. Like, <laughs> or we're not good because you said something and you didn't keep your word to it, so I don't trust you. Now, you know what I mean? cool with the. Hey man, I thought I could get it back to you. I don't think I can get it. I need another week. Are you? Good? Oh yeah, I'm I'm good with that. But um, but sometimes you know what I mean. Like what I don't like if you tell me you don't get it for me, and you tell me like that morning yeah I got it for you at night, and I get that night like oh no I don't got it at home and this and that and that. <laughs> like that's that's not cool, bro. Like right. you know what I mean. Like don't play on my time because my time is money. You can just tell me you didn't have it, bro. You feel me? Like if you tell me something, I'm gonna expect you to do it off what you say. So if you're gonna do it, then do it. If not, don't tell me you're gonna do it. You know what I mean? And don't act weird about it. You know what I mean? Like, right. you still hit a nigga up. You gotta talk to me. You know what I mean? Like, hit me up. Don't act like you owe me money. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. We're leaving in a minute, baby. Almost done. Don't hit me up and tell me you're not gonna, you know what I mean? Like, you borrow money me and you start answering my phone call. Now I'm, t I'm taking more offense to it. Like, you try to jack me now. Like, right. and I'm a hustler, so it hurts my, it hurts my pride. Like, now I'm going away, like, oh man, I gotta get that money back real quick, you know? <laughs> if, you're gonna hit, if you're gonna hit me up, hit me up, you know what I mean? You owe me, it's all good, it's, it's not my money. Like, I know homie that I owe money to, you know what I mean? Right. I owe my people money, you know? I owe, I owe him like 20 bands, you know what I mean? And I used to like go see him and stuff, you know, it was good. Like, he never acted weird about it until I got it to him, you know what I mean? He was happy. Right. Because I know you'll get to me. You know, nice dude. You know what I mean? Like, I fuck with that. Like, don't act weird because I lend it to you on, on you know what I mean, just because you're my homie. And don't don't act now. We ain't homies now because you owe me something and you just acting weird about it. Because the only reason you're acting weird about it is because you got it. Right. And you, you were trying to curb me so you can keep it. So, <laughs> it, it, I know how it works, bro. So, it's like, it's whatever, though. But, like, this year, my, uh, when I went to 2019... I just wrote everything off, you feel me? I actually put in my taxes, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 loan, cause when people, I loan people money sometimes, I used to. I don't loan people no more money, but I, I put it through my company. So if they didn't pay me, I got my tax return off it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I got my money back, right. you know what I mean? So, but I wrote everything off, but I also wrote them off in my life too. Like, hey, bro, like, if I see it was good, no offense to anybody, but, you know what I mean? Don't, don't fuck with me. Don't, don't tell people you fuck with me or you know me or anything like that because we really don't know each other, like, Cause you you hella funny, <laughs> you know what I mean. So it's like I respect you. I respect. I, and I tell my, uh, my, my one of my friends, um, you know, what I mean? he fucked up. He owed me money. And he played me, and he told me some lies. Like I was like, oh, he owed me like 150 bucks. And dude over here, like, and then, and then I, I then I saw that one of my friends saw him. He's like, yeah, man. Oh man, you see, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, like I, I fuck with Baja, I fuck with his music, bro. Yeah, he he says that like, we're hanging out, and that's my homie. I was like, bro, I heard about it. I was like, in my head, I was like. For me, bro, you haven't even called me say I'm doing for like the last two years, bro. You know what I mean? So, and it's over that 150 bucks, and it's not me, because I've called them. You know what I mean? Check right. up on them, and they don't answer. So, for me, it's like, oh, right, you just try, because you, you, you're embarrassed that you owe me, and you don't want to tell me you got it. It's good, but you're not answering me and tell, tell me, hey, you know what I mean? You don't want to fuck with me in the first place. You feel right. me? So, it was just an act the whole time, and so I, did, I don't really want to fuck with people like that no more, you know? Like, if you real, you real, bro. Money, money, money is paper. It's made. Right. But you, you're, you're real. You feel me? You're, you're an actual object. You know what I mean? Money was not an actual object before. You were born a human being. So, you know what I mean? You're an actual, you're not like a piece of paper. You can't just rip. You know what I mean? Right. So, if you, if, but your personality, if you, if you, you want to, to kill someone over or you want to fuck someone over, some, something that can rip and be thrown away, that's, then you're chasing, you're chasing trash, honestly. You feel me? Money's right. good, but money is not going to replace a human being. Like, to me, like, they, they say, hey, 
we give you 30 million and want this person. Fuck you, you ain't getting that person. You feel right. me? I might take that 30 million and we might just fucking flee with that person. You feel me? It'll <laughs> come up on your ass, but I would never switch on no one over, you know what I mean, no dollar. That's, that doesn't make no sense. Right. You know what I mean? That's how I am. I have a lot of friends, bro, that, that switch over dollars and, you know what I mean? That shows, to me, every time you switch, like if, if you owe someone, like you take $100 from your friend, you sold your friend for $100. Mm. No matter what, what you say you did, that hundred dollars ruined that friendship. So you sold out for a hundred. Right. If I, but you know what I mean. I just my and that's not, that's what I was thinking about. I just my last part sold me out for a million. You feel me? Right. I said no, I'm worth that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, <laughs> so, but when you switch on, when like when it was a couple of dollars, and you already acting hella weird, bro. Like, you know what I mean? It's good. Like, I don't want to be a part of you, bro. Three hundred dollars. That's that's a worthless person to me. You know what I mean? Like, cause I know everybody for three, four hundred dollars that ain't nothing, bro. Right. You know, I spend that on a dinner for all my homies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But don't don't sell out for a couple of dollars, man. It's not it's not worth it. Even if they do ten million dollars at you, yeah. because the thing is, you get one friend. You know what I mean? You, you there's a bunch of snakes out there, but you only get one friend, one parent. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, this guy told me. It's actually one of my customers. He told me that he's like, hey, bro, you got one friend, you got one brother, you got a couple of brothers. And you got, what's it called, um, one mom and dad. And you got one, like, not one wife, because you always replace your wife. But you got all these people. Don't sell out for these people. These people, you can't, like, you could, you could say you get an argument with a stranger. You can apologize to them, and it's over. But if you, you hurt someone that's close to you, bro, then you really, you know what I mean, you're really fucking up, you know what I mean, people, like, things that you really got, because some, they might not forgive you, and you lose that one friend. Right. Because you're not going to go get another day one, because day one is over, bro. Yo, I'm on day like million right now. You feel me? Like so, he it made sense. And I was like, you know what? He's right. You know what I mean? At that time, I had beef with one of my homies too. And I called him. I said, like, hey, bro, let's just squash this shit. You feel me? And it, it wasn't even over money. It was just like argument over just argument. You know what I mean? Right. I just squash it. I'm not. Gonna, and I, since then, I don't want to argue with my family. I don't want to argue with anybody because he's right. You feel me? I, if I lose my mom and I argue with her that day, now I don't have another mom. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I'm gonna treat one that I have around me. You know what I mean? They're really, you know, special to me, so I'm going to treat everyone good. That's my, that's, that's been my goal since I've been, like, 18. Like, treat everyone good. You know right. what I mean? And if you do wrong, that's on you. You know, not on me. Because I didn't do the wrong. Even There's been times, bro, I know a person's going to screw me over. And I've trusted them. Still, I'm like, you know what? Deep down, I'm going to try it because at the end, it's not going to be that I never helped out. I helped out. You screwed me over, so that's your loss, not mine. You know what I mean? Right. Money, I don't count that as a loss. The IRS counts that as a loss or gain because mm -hmm. they want whatever they can get. You know what I mean? Right. So that's the only time I see it as a loss when it comes to taxes. You know? <laughs> but I don't money. I can get money again. If I lose ten thousand, I'll go make it next week. You know what I mean? Right. Next day, if I maybe. You know? So it's like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh man, fuck that. You know what I mean? Oh, that's money, my last dollar. But if you told me you owe me, I need my dollar. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just because he said it. That's it. What? So, you know, a, a young guy comes to you, let's say 15, 14. Hey, man, you know, I want to I wanna be the how you got to where you are. I've had that. What do you say? All right. I told him, come through. I had a couple friends. Oh, man, teach me the way. You come to work. You want to sit your ass there. I didn't make this shit by sitting down. Mm. That's one thing I didn't. I went working. Um, I used to, I remember when I was a salesman, um, just a salesman, and it was, I was commissioned, but I'd be like, oh man, my co is in LA, I was like, we'll get him on the phone, if everything's good, I'll drive to LA tonight, sign the paperwork, mm -hmm. and I've done that plenty of times, Driven, I, I sold the car over the phone, hey, you want the car, he's like, oh, I don't know, I want to sell my transportation, I said, if you buy it tonight, I'll drive all the way to Oregon tonight, with the car, I got in the car, me and my homie, do pay for transportation, my boss gave us something, we split the money, we got in the car, we went all the way up to Oregon, came back, I was at the shop before, I left, I like, I remember I left to Oregon uh, at five o'clock. I got to Oregon by like one o'clock. I got to, I got back to the shop by eight o'clock in the morning before anybody was there. So I beat everyone there. You know what I mean? Right. So I left at closing, came back at opening. Like, right? and my boss, I always stay out there, get a hotel, I pay for. I'm like, hell, I need to get back into the money. You know what I mean? Right. So I was, I've been working for seven days, seven years now. You know what I mean? And that's the craziest thing. A lot of people be like, oh, how'd you do it, bro? I've been working. When everyone was out there partying, I did my partying though. I did my, I used to go to like 4 a.m. out and then wake up. Sometimes I just go to the shop at 4 a.m. because I know I want to wake up, bro. I get a coffee and post Craigslist. Drunk, you know what I mean? But at 8 o'clock in the morning, I was sobered up. I had my breakfast. I was at Denny's already eating. I, all my shit was done and I was ready for my day. There's been days I've been gone for three or four days, like working. And it was a crazy thing. Everyone was like, well, how the fuck do you do it, bro? 
but when you're making money, it's different. Like you might be falling asleep and you get a little chunk of money. You're like, oh, I woke up. You feel me? <laughs> like I'm good. So there's another, there's another back to get. So it's like, for, when I was younger, my goal was to get it, and you know, I didn't have shit when I was growing up. I had shit like I had, I had, the, I had the, the shit that I need. Like I didn't house. I got that. I had this. I, I had that. It was good. The other shit. So what, growing up, I had to like when I got some shit, I didn't want to lose it. So I always had to work for it. You know what I mean? I can't. I was always on the grind. Um, what's it called? Um, but that's pretty much it, you know? Well, uh, we definitely hit that mark, man. We for sure got to have a part two. For sure. Um, anything you want to shout out? Uh, so uh, shout out to everybody in Sacramento, man. Keep doing your thing. I respect everyone's hustle, you know me? And if we fell off a long time ago over some bullshit, man, it's all good. It's all gravy. Just keep getting and shine for the city, you know? Do anything you guys can to be a part of this culture and, you know I mean, be a part of Sacramento Rising and being the capital it's supposed to be, you know? I appreciate everybody, you know? Everybody out there, you know, had a big part of the success, you know? If good or bad, you know what I mean? You guys are the reason I'm here, you know? That is... In music. Oh, we got Ego coming out um, this week. It just dropped, and you know what I mean. I want everyone to go listen to that. Ego is talking about all the ego. You know what I mean. Got put that to the side. Don't make you no money, bro. It's, it's horrible to make kind of money like that. But you know what I mean. We gotta just rock out and just show up for our city. You know, everything you do affects us. So make sure everyone, you know, they're at a hundred percent. You know what I mean. Fuck, I fuck with everybody's music in Sacramento. Every artist. You feel me? Um, you know what I mean. I fuck with all that. So tap in. Let's get it to work. To make some shit happen, you know. I fuck with all y'all. For sure. Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Official. Go to officialbaja.com. Everything's linked up there, bro. My music, my sounds on my Instagram, my Facebook. Anything you need to know about me is on my website. Bio, everything's up there. Shows coming up. You can buy tickets online. You can, you know, get the VIP tickets. Whatever you need is all in there. For sure. Well, until next time, uh, WM40.TV. And we're hey. out.